Alright guys, welcome to another beer review and uh, it's a bit of an odd one because I'm not exactly sure what this beer actually is. Um, I did that sort of like barcode scan on Untapped and uh, I'm probably completely incorrect with this so any Russian viewers, uh, if there are any, or anybody who actually knows this beer, please, please, please get in touch so I can correct the information. But according to Untapped, even though the artwork is completely different, it was such a hard beer to research. This is apparently brewed by Baltica Breweries, and this is, and this is a common name that I'm seeing, Sigalevsko, I'm seeing a lot on uh, some of the more Eastern European beers. And this is just described as the Pilsner. Um, really no idea exactly what this beer is. And I've spent probably a little bit too long trying to look it up. But all I know, it's been imported uh, by Monolith um, here in Germany. And uh, yeah, it's a 4.9% Pilsner. So I'm not going to go too much into detail because I'm probably completely wrong. But I'm sure if somebody does correct me or if I do realise what the information is I'll let you all know in the description but it was a, like a 69 cents pilsner from the Eastern European supermarket so I'm not going to complain too much anyway using my Augustina glass for this one then so a Russian pilsner interesting stuff at least I think it's Russian um, I'm not sure if it's Russian or Ukrainian there's really no information Especially for the German market, it's really quite, um, it's quite up in the air to be honest and I'm surprised that they've actually allowed this to be um, distributed here in Germany. Um, because there's really, there's no like even a German attempt at the brewery's name. All you get is monolith. Um, so I'm really genuinely surprised that it's made it through and it's available but it's beer at the end of the day. It's not, you know, like a terrorist product or anything like that. It's quite a leap to make that beer. But, uh, yeah, beer in a glass then. And, uh, yeah, that's what you expect from Pilsner. It almost looks more like, uh, well, I say it, that's what you expect from Pilsner. To me, that more looks like um, a Heller's beer. A lovely golden in appearance. Uh, nice streaming amounts of carbonation there. A little bit of a straw-like colour to it. Beer poured with about two things worth of a very foamy head. Um, according to Untapped, my good friend Harry over at Blue Nose Beer Reviews has reviewed this one. Probably should have looked up to see if he'd done a review of it himself on YouTube. Um, but the beer in question, if he else reviewed it, I'll put the link down below. But uh, yeah, doesn't look too bad in terms of the appearance. Let's see what we get on the nose. A little bit soapy. Very, very faint malt presence there, like a biscuit cracker like malt. A little bit of citrus in there as well. It definitely has that citric edge that a Pilsner does have. But that's really, really all you're getting from this one. It's a really toned down and muted smelling beer. Nothing offensive, but at the same time, there's nothing that's making your mouth water. But uh, yeah, I'm so fascinated by beers like this. Even though it makes for a terrible review, technically, it also makes for an interesting one as well. So if there's any discourse that comes from this video, I, I welcome it. I really, really do. I'd like to be educated about these beers. And uh, yeah, 69 cents. Not going to complain. Let's give it a taste. Cheers. Starts off really promising. You get that lovely crisp, grainy, little bit citrusy, light flavour coming through. But then it finishes really quite earthy, actually, and maybe a slight hint of a like a metallic edge to it. I just smelt it then and it reminded me of sick for some reason. 
what's worrying me more is, is that my breath? Does my breath smell like sick? No, there's like this sort of like um, slightly fermented fruit aroma to it. Yeah, very like damp, musky. I mean, I know you get that from some pilsers and from like Ellis beers, but this is like... But then it's gone again. That's weird. That's absolutely weird. There's just this one-off flavour that I can't really put my finger on. And the weird thing is, it's not a really offensive flavour as well. It just seems a little bit out of place. It's got this like very slight artificial almost confectionery sort of flavour to it. Crisp, light mouthfeel. Definitely has me thinking of a like a come between of a grainy Czech Pilsner and a slightly citrusy German Pilsner, or Bohemian Pilsner. But yeah, it's just got that cheap beer essence to it. But it's so weird because it's not an offensive or like you take a swig and spit it out. It's remarkably drinkable, if that makes sense. Yeah, it's just got this sort of like a mouthfeel of like spittle when you, your mouth's foaming up a little bit and you're like accidentally like swallowing and apologies for the horrific images that I'm probably putting into your head right now yeah it's just uh, I don't know there are parts of me that are saying this is an awful awful beer very metallic -y, medicinal hop presence right on the back end after you finish drinking it lingers for a little bit too long it's like I can happily finish the rest of this beer but it's really not enjoyable at the same time it's a weird like paradox again they're like little bits of apple like apple that's maybe bruised and it's gone a bit soft I think the problem with this is, it does taste very cheap, and although not the most offensive taste in beer, there are like aspects of it that just do not sit right on the palate at all, but those flavours are still digestible. But um, yeah, this is, it's not great. Uh, and in fact, it's probably one of the lowest rated beers that I've had in quite a while. Um, so for whatever this beer is, I'm giving it a 4 out of 10. Because it's very below average. Um, if it was a dull, inoffensive beer, happy days. You know, straight 5 out of 10. Gets the job done. But you'd have like 2 or 3 bottles of this and you're like... Oof. Like weird flavours would start to develop. Anyway, my quote's finished. I think that signals the end of this review. Whoever's brewed this beer, just check out those links down below. If I find any other reviews online, of course, those links are going to be included. And um, yeah, it's always going to be hit and miss when you try beers where you can't even do basic research on it. But I love the chase. The thrill of the chase is very satisfying. It's just when you get a beer that's not very nice, it sort of makes you reassess your whole like perspective on beer. But um, oh yeah, it's like fartiness now, really lingering. So it's getting a three out of ten. Not a drain pour, but uh, by far one of the nicest things I've had in my mouth recently. Anyway, thank you guys for watching. And hopefully, I shall see thee later. Cheers, I guess.